Merry Christmas! My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Whip's Cheap Guitars. The other day I got an email from GlaryMusic.com. They wanted this channel to review this bass. Oh yeah, I'll do it. BAM! And at $66 with free shipping, it's literally one of the most affordable basses on the internet. Let's take a good look at this thing and see what you get. Stay tuned. I'm gonna leave a link in the description, so don't forget to check that out. Oh yeah. There she is. G-L-A-R-R-Y. Now this bass is called the Glary Precision Electric Bass. Precision, where have I heard precision before? Yeah, it's actually got that super familiar P bass shape. The headstock looks about right. Let's take a look over every square inch of this bass and then we'll plug it in and see what we got. Stay tuned. First off, it has an extremely basic bridge. Oh, you know what? The controls, they feel they feel good and solid. I mean, they're, uh, they're actually kind of stiff. Not stiff in a bad way, but stiff in a way that's like, you know, they're not like... Now, the pick guard on this bass looks just as good as any other pick guard. You know, the funny thing is there are pick guards you can buy that cost $66 by themselves. Or you can get a whole bass guitar for 66 bucks. The neck plate? Well, that looks fine. On this body, this is one piece, this is one piece, and then this is one piece. So this is actually a three-piece body. At this price point, I would expect to see plywood, but this is actually three pieces of real wood, and it's quite nice looking. It's got a good light feel. Now how straight is your neck? Oh, this neck actually has... Let me see if I can show you guys this. Now there's a pretty good look right there at the straightness of this neck. Uh, right out of the box, it's straight. I mean, it's pretty much dead flat. Now here's something interesting. Take a look at how thick that fingerboard is. It's as thick as an ink pen. It's like three eighths of an inch thick. Pickup looks good. <laughs> Now, now the finish on this instrument, believe it or not, I honestly can't find any flaws with it. Oh, there's, there's a little something. That's kind of goofy looking. <laughs> you can see that there's like, I don't know, they spilled coffee on this sucker or something. I don't know. This uh, stain goes from one piece of wood into the next, into the next. Honestly, for me, I couldn't care less. Now, moving on to the nut. <laughs> This nut is a, uh, it's a plastic nut. What I generally like is to push down at the second and third fret, and I want to see just enough space between the string and the first fret to know there's space. This nut is cut a bit high, but high can be dealt with, low really can't. I'm not really sure what kind of wood this fingerboard is made out of. It kind of has a very uniform look to it. I, I don't know if it's some kind of a composite wood product. But then you see areas like this where you can see the grain kind of coming through and, and the different colors in the wood. So yeah, I think this is real wood, but I think it's got some kind of a milling process to it that gives it these perfect lines along it and, and kind, of, kind of makes it look odd for a second. The fretwork looks fine. I mean, the frets are all seated in there. I'm checking here for high frets. And at this price point, I would expect the fret work to be really, really rough. But there's no sharp fret edges. All the frets are nice and level. Pretty amazing for the money. There's another look at that bridge. I can tell you that although this is a very simple bridge, although it's a very inexpensive bridge, it's quite solid. From one of these saddles to the next, there's no space between them. There's no slop. Some of these cheaper bridges are sloppy. This one's actually really nice. If you look at the grain pattern here, you can see this is a uh, slab cut neck. There's not much grain run out at all. It's actually quite a decent piece of wood. <laughs> The 
the tuners on this thing appear to be pretty much your standard Chinese tuners. These gears, they need to be lubed. If you buy one of these or any other base in the world, lubricate these open tuners. I actually really dig the grain on this thing. The back of the neck has kind of a satin feel to it. Kind of a thin finish with uh, not much slick to it. I kind of like the way that feels. Now I had totally expected these fret ends to be sharp. And they're actually not. This isn't bad. Now the profile on this neck, this neck has more of a, uh, more of a D style profile. It's quite thick front to back and it's uh, it's actually quite a solid neck so let's do a real apples and oranges comparison to kind of get a little more of an idea of where this bass fits in what kind of sound it's got now on the high and low end of the bass spectrum we can put the p bass or the jazz bass kind of in that more midi more high here's the exact opposite end this is not only a thunderbird it's got flats on it So when it comes to the Glary Precision Electric Bass, what's the bottom line? Well, for starters, it is one of the cheapest basses you're going to find, period. Let's take a quick look at the pros and cons. Now the pros! This neck is a thick neck. I mean, it's thick. That might be a pro or it might be a con. If you got little tiny hands, this neck might be a little on the beefy side. But on the other side of that argument, it can take the tension of the string pull. A lot of cheap basses, they get really terribly bowed necks because the wood in the neck isn't strong enough to take the string pull and it just bends the neck out of shape. A lot of times the truss rod can't compensate for that and what you end up with is a entry level bass that's pretty much unplayable. This one doesn't have that problem. This bass has a very, very sturdy neck. The string pull doesn't seem to affect it at all. Even when I loosen the truss rod up, it's not pulling much of a bow into this neck. It's a rigid neck. It feels good. I love that about it. The pickup sounds nice and clear. The controls are smooth and they do exactly what they're supposed to. Now the finish on this guitar is absolutely perfect. I haven't found anything at all wrong with the finish at all. It's just a good, nice, clear coat finish. I love it. It's not heavy. This basswood body is actually quite light. So what I've got here in my hands, I actually have a very lightweight bass with an incredibly stable stiff neck for $66 free shipping. It not only plays good, but it also sounds good. The controls work good, the pickup sounds good, the bass is real light, the neck's real stable, the finish is great. Fantastic. Now let's take a look at the cons. Now the finish on this bass is perfect, but this bass does have a couple blemishes in the actual woodwork itself. Maybe where glue has spilled out of the joint before the clear coat was put on. And here's another blemish. This is a, uh, I don't know if this is glue that spilled over or if this is some kind of a stain that, that spilled over. But you can see it goes from this piece of wood all through this piece, all through this piece. So this is something that's superficial on the wood itself underneath the coat. Now the other problem I've had is the tuner on the G-string actually stripped almost immediately. Now if you look right here where this cog gear meets this worm gear, these gears on the cog gear, these little teeth, they're broken off. These tuners come without any lubrication. They're very dry. They have to be lubricated. All of these open tuners without lubrication, they have such friction and they bind. 
and this worm gear produces so much torque that it's easy to strip these out. Now, to be fair, these three tuners, these all are working just fine. Uh, this one broke right off the bat. These three I've had no problems with at all. So this might just be a fluke in quality control. Now I contacted glarymusic.com about that tuner. They said they went through the feedback on that instrument and that they'd never had that problem before. They also said if there was a problem with a piece or a part, they'd send you a replacement part. They also said if there's a major issue with the instrument, they'd just send you a different instrument. That's about as good as you could hope for. I've already ordered a replacement tuner for this because I like the bass, I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna use it. I think it's a fantastic instrument for the money and I'll just throw that on and replace it. I'll make sure I lube all these up and we should be good to go. So honestly, the bottom line, for 66 bucks, it's a great bass. It's light, it's got a rigid neck, it's got good frets, sounds good, plays good, the tone is good, the pickup's good. I like everything about it. If it was great quality, I would tell you it's great quality. If it was firewood quality, I would tell you it's firewood quality. As far as I'm concerned, the only issue with this bass is that tuner. The problem with the tuner might be just a QC issue with that particular tuner. It might be that the tuners need to be pampered a little bit right out of the box. Make sure you get them lobed before you even use the bass would be my recommendation. Now as far as the finish flaws on this bass, man, I couldn't care less. I think the bass looks cool. I like the wood grain to it. Everything about it is playable. Everything about it is usable. It's got a couple special surprises that I didn't expect, like this very solid rigid neck. I love that. And this good sturdy bridge. Good bridge, good neck, beautiful body. What else you wanna know? So the bottom line on the Glary Precision Electric Bass, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I think the pros outweigh the cons. I think for 66 bucks, it's a usable working bass. I would gig with this bass and never think twice about it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this review. My name's Dave Whipple and you've been watching Whip's Cheap Guitars. And speaking of cheap gear, I love cheap gear, you love cheap gear. If you guys wanna support this channel, Pop on over to eBay and grab my new album, The Atomic Honkies. So every song on this album was recorded with super cheap gear. Check it out. Pop on over to eBay and get your own copy. Just look for Whip's Cheap Guitars on eBay. Don't forget to hit the sub button, don't forget to hit the share button, and I hope you guys will catch up with us on the next one. See you guys soon.